Hi guys, right, so we've got the Still MAS 170 chainsaw. I've um, got two of them here, both my dad's, um, neither are working. This one here, um, got a spark, take the spark plug out, put your spark plug on there, major in the odd position, crank it over, we get a spark, but it won't fire up. Pull the car to pieces, which is quite simple, um, but really, you take this top cover off it, which is on here, you take that off there. Um, this is held on here, the air filter. Um, there's two bolts which come through to here. They attach on the back here. And then once that's on there, you'll find the carburetor, which is this thing here, which then pulls off. Um, we've pulled that off. When you take it off, you end up with these on either side of it. This is on one side, and then we've got this one here on the other. I'll post some pictures shortly, but you can see when we pull, when we pull them apart, we had um, sawdust and things in them. So inside them, there's some real little uh, ones called a measuring valve, I think. And you can look at mine here. Real delicate little thing here, and you can see on one side of it. You see there, it's full of, can you make it out there? It's got sawdust and all sorts in it. There you are, you see sawdust there. Now bear in mind, that is pumping fuel through, you know, real tiny little holes. Let me show you the jet. The jet is, if you make it out there, that's how small the jet is. Now if that gets blocked with sawdust, it's not going to work. So we've ordered, uh, new diaphragm kit so we'll show you the fitting on that one now then the other one we've got going on now is that one down there the other one is this one here now this one uh, as far as we know we've got fuel going to it but when we crank it over we get no spark plug we get no spark so spark plug is on here and um, if you leave it on there make sure it's in the on position crank it over, we're getting no spark at all, new spark plug and everything on there. So what we're going to do on this one is we're going to replace the ignition coil. So the ignition coil, basically um, there are three bolts, where's the side bit gone, with my starter on there, hang on, wait there we go. So this is what you normally see, one of these, um, one, two, three, four bolts. They come off there, that does pull off there. So once that is off, this is what you are left with. So I thought, oh great fix, because when we look at, basically as this rotates, as you're pulling it, that creates the spark. Because this here, you can see on mine here, these here, the plate there, that brushes against, well there's a slight gap, about a business card gap, between that contact there, and you get it there, there's a plate there, and another plate further down here, and it rotates past that and just touches it. I've just loosened mine now, so mine touches it now. Now when I looked at mine now, these two here were all rusted. So I thought, oh right, fine, well let me paper those, and with the contacts there, and then try it again. But it still didn't work. So what we're gonna do is, new one of these. So that's the coil, that creates a spark. But in the meantime, I'm going to take the one off the other one, put it on this one, so we can get one of them going. Right, taking the, the wires off, the two wires, one of them is with the pig, um, you better be taking the carb off, because what you've got is, you've got one wire which goes onto, can you see it there? One more, which fastens onto there basically, which is you have to stop it. Now, to get that one off, it does actually come back through here and then through the hole there. So, if you take the carb off, it's a bit easier to feed through there. Alright, now then, we had a problem with this. Once we got it back the first time it was serviced, um, this mechanism kept flicking out. The reason was when we got it back, it was left in. This position, right? Well, that's this is the correct position here. 
with that there you can see it there and when you lift it up that flicks into the notch there okay however when we got it back we got it back like this I'll take it out I'll show you what happened easy said than done Right, we got it back in this position here. What they've done, they've put it in, the bar is still underneath it, and it still does, when you push it down and up, it still clicks. So you think, oh, it's clicking, it's right. But then what happens, when you push it down, there's nothing holding this up, holding it down, sorry. That is trying to push it up. When the chainsaw starts, this thing flicks out. So what you're going to make sure, when you put this back in again, you've got to make sure that this comes, this here, where are we, this clip has to come on the top, so when it clicks up, sorry, when it clicks down, it's here, when it clicks up, it's there, so it's pushing it down all the time, okay? Just so you know. Right, so the diaphragm repair kit has arrived anyway. We've got a few extra bits in this as well. This is what I've got here now, stripped apart. I've actually sent through a new part for this here, like a new cover for this bit and this here. I'm not too sure how easy they are to take out, so I'm going to leave them in for now. I'll just replace the other parts anyway. So initially we've got the um, Show you there. We've got a tiny little thing on the camera. We've got a tiny little pin here, which is going to go into this little hole here with the spring. So we'll put it together and try and show you how that goes. We've got a little notch on here, the spring that the pin goes into kind of like this and then on that end there is where the spring goes so apparently the spring can play out as well there's a little bar in here as well allegedly which stops the whole thing or keeps the whole thing here you know. little bar here which passes through here as well bar is in there, the spring is there, so hopefully the whole thing can kind of be levered back into the hole. So I don't know how much tension there is on this yet. Let's see what happens. Okay, getting the um spring and needle in there is really difficult because what you've got is this here now underneath there is a spring okay now a couple of times I thought the spring keeps flying out because I put this bit here on upside down so basically when you press when it's finished this just presses down a touch as it goes down there you can see it as it goes down there. See, that goes down there and lifts up the needle there. So that's how it should be. So the spring is underneath that indentation, the indentation there. So on the other side, that's almost like a nipple, and that's all the spring in there. So that's in there. That is now tight on there. So now for the other bits and pieces. So got four holes on this side so side with four holes on which is going to be this side here which obviously is going to have 
this one on here. So this one is going to go. This this metal here is going to be against this like that. Then the gasket on top. The gasket's on top. We can put the top of the car back on again. So I wasn't too sure whether there's a right way up on this or not. Just double check it. Will it fit either way or not? It will go that way. And it will go that way. And it will go that way. So it is possible to put this back on the wrong way around. Right, we'll do that piece last then. Let's do some research on the other one. Right, so let's do the other side then. How hard can that one be? So again on this one, we've got this little thin diaphragm. This one can only go on one way, the shape of it. Before that goes on there, we've got to put this in here like a little kind of filter tray. And the last one just poked in, or poked out should I say. So that I'm hoping will hopefully just poke in again. Don't want to bend it. There we go, it's gone in. You can see that. It's in there and seated there now. So, diaphragm goes back on there. Other end of the card now. And again for this one, how many ways could it go? On the bottom here there's some clues here, you look at this shape here, you've got to match the shape we've got down here. So it's going to go that way you would have thought, because that will match that horseshoe bit there. So that's we've got to go. Back in there. Should be the only piece with a different head screw, I think, on there. Now, looking at my old one over here, you can see that the pipe that points back towards the handle is level with the um, butterfly valve there. So we now know it goes that way around. So once again I'm going to put this on first. So you again are going to go on there. Assuming this goes in that way because there's a cut out here. So we almost had a major cock up then. Before we put this side in, over here, there's a tiny hole here as well. I took the throttle jet out as well. That's that one there to clean it. So that one there should be able to see through it and you can. So that carefully goes in there as well. Because it wouldn't have run well without that. It's a run. Right, 
so that they're only brass these, so you got to make sure you've got a decent screw around them. Mine's a very old screwdriver, mine's a Meccano screwdriver. We've had it some years. It's alright some of the time. No, I'm not going to go mad at it. Right. So you're going to come back on there now. Now we'll stick the carb body back on again with that facing the that's what you call it. You know what I mean? This bit here. Choke. Right. So four different bolts, screws, and they go in there. Right, so carb. All back together again now. And also this, so fingers crossed, this should be the way forward. So Reassembly. I never showed you taking it off, but it is the reverse of putting it on. So, I'll show you some of it. What we did when we took it off, um, I ran this here full of tissue paper because I didn't want any bits or anything getting in there when I was cleaning around here. So I'm going to keep all this nice and clean, you see there. Right. I believe if you spray a bit of uh, WD in there, isn't a bad idea either, for starting purposes as well. Right, so this little device here, it's only gone one way because one of these is a bit higher than the other. This is going to go to the front anyway, obviously that's going to be at the top. Um, before I do that though, I'm going to replace the fuel pipe on this as well. So I'm going to take the fuel out and we'll see what happens then. Okay, getting the old fuel pipe out is easy enough. Basically give it a yank and it comes out. The problem is though, trying to get the one back in again, pushing this back in, you can't use a screw to push it in because you make a hole through it. So really you've got to take this off. So there's four screws on the side here, one on the brake here. So take those off and the top for your oil and your petrol. On the top of these you have these. So basically you turn it on its side and it just pulls out. Then a bit of wiggling should come out. I know it does because it came out yesterday on the other one, so I don't know why this won't come out. Aha, uh -huh, move it this way. Take it over there, persuade it a bit, wiggle it back, it comes out. Right, so now I've got access to this. Is this screwed in? I don't know. It's not screwed, I don't guess it is screwed in. Look at the crud on that. There's a lot on there. Right, but anyway, we can now get access to this now. So, what we can do now is fish this out of here which is the filter which then should look like I'll show you in a minute when it comes out and because I've yanked it I can't get it out now right so here is your filter Pulls off that. And here is the wire, the pump. It's not bad, but you can see there 
how kind of thin it is getting here. With a petrol, it just kind of eats against it. Eventually, it'll start just pouring and be crap, basically. So, remember which way it went in? It went in that way. So, that's got to go back in there that way. So, my new one, which is that one. So, the curly end, yeah, has to go in there first. So, curly end in there. And then shove that back in there. And give it a twist, and it should go back in there. Difficult to put in, but you can't use a screwdriver in to put it in. It's got to be forced in basically. So there will be a way. I'm just going to clean my fingers up and clean this off, and then I shall get it in. Right, it's in. <sighs> that was bloody hard work getting that in. Right, you've got to get one side in first, one edge in, and then I use the edge of a plastic strip just to not knock the other one down in. Uh, but don't use a screwdriver because it'll split it. So it's in there now. So once it's in, I think it should. Yeah, so it's rotating quite happily now, so it's definitely seated in there now. Right, so once it's in, um, I've got a bit of crap in here, a bit of sawdust and stuff. So I'm going to just uh, rinse this out, and then uh, we'll put the fuel filter on. Right, drizzle your fuel filter around, so it's the wrong way around, so it comes to the top. Shove it back down again. And that's to go in the base. So it will go there eventually. The twist is about around the way it should be. I think it should be, should be up, I think it is. This should then point down. So there you have it. It's pointing down when this is pointing. So when that goes in there, like this, correct, yep. Yeah. This is now, this arrow here is pointing up towards us. So that should now go in there. That should go in there. And this then goes behind. And a plastic clip that holds the choke assembly on. Which it does make sure it goes all the way down and behind it. Right. It's in. Put the filter on and put the top back on. I can't put the top on yet because you've got to put the assembly on. So I'll turn it back off there again. Okay, assembling your levers again. To get this one on, the throttle, there's a little arm here. Pull that arm towards you. Okay, once it's pulled towards you, this will then push on. You'll see where, it grew, where the groove goes. So then, that works fine. Now then, for the choke, did that go under or over this metal bar? It went underneath the bar. So, that goes in the hole, I'll try and show you, that's got to go in that hole there, I'm just going to double check whether that goes over or underneath this bar, because we have, luckily, another one here, yes it goes underneath the bar, right, so, underneath, underneath that bar there goes this, that goes underneath, into the hole, it's in. Right. Once it's in, this we now know is going to click into our little groove thing we had from earlier on. Once it's located across far enough, now what should happen now is when this is in the down position down that's full choke so this should be shut okay so you have this little spring here so that little spring has to go little end goes in here then the rest of it goes back into your throttle arm I think yes there's a hole for it to go into so what we'll do, we'll take it out of there a minute 
push it in there. Give me a way of doing this. Put that in there. We'll push that back in there. If we undo the throttle arm, not throttle arm, the choke arm, get a bit of play on it. Careful without snapping it. To be able to get this lever back in again. Yeah, so we loosen it a little bit first. Stick it in the car bit first, and then hopefully. If you lift it up, is that going to help us or not? Who knows, there's got to be a way now. Right, back on the um, still 170. Right, we've put replaced the, um, we put the carb kit in and it started and then it revved really high and stuff, started went off, wouldn't take over anything, and then just will not start again. Uh, every time you try it, just constant floods. Um, I know there's a pig to start anyway, apparently, if you don't get it right, uh, but it's non-stop flooding. So, searched on the internet last night, uh, and eventually, on someone's side comment, I find out the reason why. The reason is, when we replace the, the diaphragm kit inside, there's a gasket and a diaphragm. And you would think that you normally put the diaphragm on the carburetor and the gasket on top. If you do that, though, the diaphragm then touches the needle and lets through too much petrol. So, should be down again now. So, what should happen now is this top bit here, which is coming off now, um, what we'll now see is we've got this, and then we've got the gasket here on the top. So, that's the wrong way around. So, we're going to take the gasket off, peel off carefully. So what's happening is this here is touching our little valve down here and there's too much fuel. So this actually works as a spacer. So that's got to go on first and then this on second. So it's a learning curve, isn't it? So that's going back on there. So we'll just put back together carefully again now. And then we shall see how it runs. So back in a few minutes. Right, so accelerator throttle cable here. You push the little butterfly clip down on the back, and underneath it should just hook on. So, obviously, getting off is reverse, you push it down and pull it off. But you'll see there's like a little uh, recess that it clips into. Okay, that's on there. Well, on the other side, we've got the the main choke assembly one. So on that one, the trick to this one is put this one in here first, like this. So this goes into your throttle, into your choke assembly first, like this. There is a hole in the end of here, which that goes into there. Bit of a fiddle, but it will go in. Like that's in, and then you carefully that's to go. The plastic bar has to go underneath the throttle, so then be carefully push this back into the hole, into there. Now, then, when we got it back from the repairers last time, the problem with it was. This metal thing here was underneath it, so we're going to make sure that, that comes to the side. So when this locks in, which it will in a second, hopefully, and this pushes down into here like this. Yes, it does. So you'll now see um, this here is now against there. And once it's in that position there, you will see that once it's like this, 
Is that right or wrong? That should be closed now, that actually. It's been cocked up there somewhere along the line. Let's double check that. Oh, that's right, yeah. So once it's up there, that'll be closed, which it is closed there now. That's fine. Okay, so once it goes back into the up position, this will be position one. When it goes into position zero, this metal here will come over here and touch this, like this, which then shuts the circuit out, which stops the saw. Because before, it, this was always flicking out, and apparently it was never shutting down properly. Hard to shut down without choking it. So that was why, because that was in the wrong position. Also, this as well, this was bent in like a real kind of tight U position. So once it was here, it was really difficult to get from there to there. It wouldn't do it. As you pushed it, it levered and pushed this bit off. So we've opened this up a little bit there now. So that will now fix that. Right. So that's all back in there now. Carb can go back on. Fuel's still on, that's good. That's going to go back in there. Two nuts for these. Easy way to put these on, stick your nut in your socket first because they fiddle to get at. And get them started on there. And I did drop one on earlier on. Just found it down the back there. Well, actually, if we tip the saw, it should come out. There it is. Tighten these up now. Because the carb's not come off, it's not totally empty. So it might be an easy start now, I don't know. I wouldn't tighten all at one side, I'd do a little bit on each, each side, otherwise it can go on crooked sometimes. Now last night I was fiddling around with the um, idler as well, so I did turn the idle up I think, I don't think I turned it down again, I'm not too sure, so if it starts, it might be running really really fast, but hey, at least it'll start, I hope. Right, that's attached there, that's down in there, that's all good. Okay, right, that back on there. So stick it on the floor. Move this down so you can kind of see what's going on, hopefully. Put my camera here. Let's see what happens. Time really is it? Right, let's take it off there now. Put on half throttle. It's 
Still nothing. Try full again. Right, what I'm going to do. Take the spark plug out. Should be wet now, very wet. Oh yeah, soaking wet. So if we pull it a few times now, there is a load of fuel in there. Shit, lots of fuel in there now. Just spray out of fuel now. So I'm hoping doing that should go rid of the excess fuel. Try the spark plug again. So I'm reckoning now it's just flooded basically at the moment. So hopefully doing that. Well, it started. So there is a lady here. off perfectly as well excellent how easy will it start though right so the Stirl MAS 170 um, I know that my dad took it in to get it serviced and 50 quid just to look at it uh, and when it came back it was worse than ever really um, so it just shows you know you can do stuff yourself it's not that hard um, that's it yeah have a go but, uh, yeah it's not difficult check out my video um, Message me if you're stuck, but uh, yeah, bit of a fiddle, a um, few sleepless nights, but router on the internet and stuff, you know, it's only a fact that I found that guy's hint and tip last night through loads and loads of stuff, and it said, oh, by the way, don't forget that the diaphragm does not go against the carburetor body. On the bottom of the carb it does, but on the one on top, it certainly doesn't, the, uh, the gasket acts more like a spacer, so... Hints and tips. So that's the still MS 170. So that one there. So I've still got another one to do as well. The other one isn't sparking. So that one replacing the, uh, the points on that one. The points, the ignition coil finger jig. So that's on order. So uh, I'll show you that one that arrives as well. Okay, thank you for watching.